The first unmanned mission to the moon was in 1959 by the Soviet lunar program, with the first man landing being Apollo 11 in 1969. The primary objective of Apollo 11 was to complete a national goal set by President John F. Kennedy on May 25, 1961, perform a crewed lunar landing and return to Earth. Additional flight objectives included scientific exploration by the lunar module, deployment of a television camera to transmit signals to Earth, and deployment of a solar wind composition experiment and seismic experiment package. During the exploration, the two astronauts were to collect samples from the moon and return them to Earth. They were also given instructions to photograph the lunar surface as much as they could. On July 20, 1969, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever land on the moon. About six and a half hours later, Armstrong became the first person to ever walk on the moon. As he took his first steps, Armstrong famously said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin spent 21 hours 36 minutes on the moon surface. After a rest period that included 7 hours of sleep, the ascent stage engine fired at 124 hours 22 minutes. It was shut down 435 seconds later when the Eagle reached an initial orbit of 11 by 55 miles above the moon, and when Columbia was on its 25th revolution. Interestingly, over the years, some people have come forward with some interesting photographs that could prove that something else was witnessed on the moon. Going back a while ago, a strange anomaly was picked up on by eagle-eyed viewers looking through archive footage of Apollo 11. The photograph in question is that of the moon. However, when people zoomed in, they could see what appeared to be an object hovering slightly above the moon. The photograph has earned itself the name of Breakoff. As some have suggested, a piece of the moon somehow broke off when the photograph was taken. What's strange though is a photograph taken seconds later doesn't show the anomaly, and this has led some to put out their theories for what the object could be. The original photograph was sent to NASA by some amateur astronomers in the hopes of getting to the bottom of what the object is. However, NASA hasn't provided an answer for what the object could be. Going back, the former head of a secret government program whose task to investigate UFO sightings came forward with bold claims. They told several media outlets that extraterrestrial life may exist. They further said that millions of dollars had been put into the research of exotic technologies affiliated with unidentified aerial phenomena. These headlines caught the attention of many worldwide. As for the last 80 years, people have been coming forward with their encounters with mysterious lights in the sky. It's important to remember that a UFO is simply an object that someone cannot identify at that moment in time, hence why it stands for Unidentified Flying Object. It's only been in recent years that the UFO has been linked to extraterrestrial beings. With that being said though, the thought of planet Earth being visited by another form of life is exciting for some. Some have said if you're going to believe any reports of UFOs, you might as well trust those coming from the men who have actually been to space. The list of those who have made claims of sightings includes Edgar Mitchell, Caddy Coleman and Dr. Brian O'Leary. Buzz Aldrin has also spoken of his own experience on board the Apollo 11 when they saw something flying alongside them. At first they thought it was the final stage of the detached rocket, until mission control confirmed it was over 6,000 miles away from them. Dr. Brian O'Leary, a former NASA astronaut, said the following. There is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time, that their appearance is bizarre from any kind of traditional materialistic western point of view, that these visitors use technologies of consciousness. They use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems that seem to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. NASA scientist and photo analysis George Leonard is someone who has a story to tell. He worked for NASA and was able to get his hands on various official NASA photographs of the moon. While working for NASA, one of his jobs was to study thousands of photographs that were taken by the space agency. Not only that, but he spoke with dozens of NASA officials and was able to listen first hand to astronaut recordings. 
He then published a book called Someone Else is on the Moon, and inside the book included many of these photographs. However, because some of the photographs are of low quality, some have said they can't be taken as fact, and could actually be faked. From a scientific point of view, they say that what people are seeing is known as pareidolia. Scientists describe this as our brain playing tricks on our mind, and say that our brains are hardwired to see faces and images and everyday things. Another mysterious thing was picked up on during a live broadcast of Apollo 11. In Western Australia, many residents who were watching the live show said they saw an unusual occurrence. One viewer called Una Ronald watched the broadcast by NASA and was surprised at what she saw. Interestingly, the residents of Honeysuckle Creek in Australia said they saw a different broadcast to the rest of the world. Shortly before Armstrong stepped on the moon's surface, the picture changed on their TVs. The residents said it went from a dark picture to a bright one, and that during this change they could still hear the voice transmission. The actual film of Apollo 11 was broadcast from Australia, but these residents noticed something that no one else did, which is why they said they was watching a different broadcast to the rest of the world. As Una and others were watching Neil Armstrong walking on the surface of the moon, they spotted what they said was very clearly a Coke bottle, and that it was kicked in the right-hand side of the picture. Una couldn't believe what she saw and phoned her friends to see if they had seen the same thing. Unfortunately, they missed it. The next day the walk was being broadcast so they tried to see if they could see it. However, it didn't appear and Una even suggested the rerun looked slightly different. Others did come forward and say they saw the same thing, causing an article to be published in the Western Australian newspaper. Going back a while ago, a video was making its way around social media suggesting that Buzz Aldrin admitted we'd never went to the moon. A little girl asked him the question, why have we not been back to the moon? And he said the following. That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there and that's the way it happened. And if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why something didn't happen, so in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep doing. So what people are focusing on is the part where he said we didn't go there. Many have come forward and said he slipped up and finally admitted we never went to space. Websites posted this at the time and said he didn't mean to say this, with many picking up on his body language and suggesting that he was telling the truth. However, during that same interview, he goes into detail of why we never went back to the moon. He explains that it was a very expensive mission and that's the main reason we haven't gone back. He goes on to say that we don't want to keep redoing things we've already done, and we should look to future projects. The reason people could be getting confused is because he worded his answer badly, and this is what was picked up on. Buzz makes a good point about money and this could be the reason we never went back. Back in 1973, the total cost of the Apollo program reported to Congress was $25.4 billion. So spending this money on a mission they've already achieved would be pointless. It would make more sense for NASA to spend money on other ventures. However, not everyone is so convinced, and as mentioned, people think he actually let out the truth. Another thing that was reported recently was that NASA lost the original footage of the first moonwalk. Incredibly, although this sounds like some outlandish theory, there is some truth to this. NASA had this to say, NASA searched for but could not locate some of the original Apollo 11 data tapes. Original in the sense that they directly recorded data transmitted from the moon. An intensive search of archives and records concluded that the most likely scenario was that the program managers determined there was no longer a need for the tapes, since all the video and data were recorded elsewhere, and they were erased and reused. NASA also said the data from these original tapes were relayed to the Manned Spacecraft Center, further saying the following. The video was recorded there and in other locations. There's no missing video from the Apollo 11 moonwalk. Interestingly, it was announced that a NASA intern is selling what he says are the lost Apollo 11 tapes. The worker said he bought the tapes from the government and wanted to sell them. 
However, NASA officials have said the tapes don't contain any material that hasn't already been preserved. NASA had this to say about the tapes. If the tapes are as described in the sale material, there are two inch videotapes recorded in Houston from the video that's been converted to a format that could be broadcast over commercial television and contain no material that hasn't been preserved by NASA. So my question to you guys is what do you make of the mysteries surrounding Apollo 11? Do you think there's any credibility to them? Or are they just outlandish theories? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.